Hello again, everybody, or hello again for everybody that's checking in for the second time. Hope everybody's hanging in there all right. It's raining today. Hope you try to get outside anyway. Maybe go stomp around in some puddles in your backyard. So today I'm going to read chapters four and five. They're a little bit longer than yesterday's chapter, so I'm only going to do two of them. And uh, just like yesterday, I'm going to have questions down in the description right below my picture here of my video. We're going to have some comprehension questions, some um, things to look up, some Spanish words to look up. So let's get on with it. Here she is, Stella Diaz Never Gives Up, Chapter 4. After dropping off Linda's ice cream, Mom and I play cards, our Friday night tradition, until Nick comes home from work. Covered in splotches of marinara sauce, Nick walks in smelling like yummy garlic. These are the perks of his part-time job at a pizza restaurant, that and the occasional breadsticks. Hola, he says, tossing his name tag onto the counter. I notice that it says Nicholas instead of Nick. I hold the name tag in my hands like evidence in a detective show. Nicholas, I point at the name tag, but you go by Nick. I don't bother to mention that I used to call him Kiki. That's when I was really little and couldn't pronounce his name. Oh, they just made the name tag based on my application. I thought I'd try it out. Sounds kind of cool. Weird, I reply. He messes up my curls. You're weird. Mom chuckles. How was work, Nino? Fun. My friend John and I did a competition to see who could make the most pizzas tonight. He barely won. Nick starts stretching. He's been taking karate classes. That is one reason he has the part-time job. He wanted to pay for them. Because of the classes, he stretches all the time now. The bigger reason is that Nick wants to save up money to buy a car one day. It sounds very impressive and hard. He's going to have to make many pizzas. I've seen game shows, and I know how expensive cars can be. Well, I found out that I'm going to Shed Aquarium Summer Camp, I say proudly. Way to go, sis, Nick replies while trying to do splits. Standing back up, Nick says, Mom, I was thinking. Yes? Do you think I could start driving lessons soon? I'll be 15 next month. I'm going to need to learn how to drive if I'm going to get a car. Possiblemente. Let's see how much they are. I look at Mom, and she quietly gulps. I bet she's thinking the same thing I am. Nick is turning 15 years old. That sounds so old. Not as old as my abuelo, but pretty grown up. But why do you need to drive, I ask? You can walk or ride your bike. Yeah, but then I could drive us to school. Or maybe even do pizza delivery. There are some older kids at the shop who do that. They say they make even more money delivering than just making pizzas especially delivering at the big houses. Nick then pretends to drive with a couch pillow as his steering wheel. Vroom, vroom, he says, dashing around the living room. See, I'd be a great driver. I roll my eyes. He's not that mature. Nick looks over at me and winks. Want a ride? He gives me a piggyback ride around the living room. I laugh so hard that I can barely breathe as he zips around. I guess it's good that Nick isn't too mature to have fun. When he drops me off on the couch, he adds... Don't forget to rate me with a big tip. Five stars, I say, giggling. Before going up to bed, I go up to see Pancho in my room. He swims in his fishbowl happily when he sees me. I'm glad I don't have to worry about you changing or wanting to be named Francisco instead of Pancho. You always stay the same. I turn off the lights. Buenas noches, my fish friend. And look, here we go. There's Nick pretending to drive with a pillow. Mm -hmm. Chapter 5. Look, more turtles. I wake up the next morning to the sound of the vacuum. It's terrible noise, especially when you're trying to sleep. It's noise pollution for my ears. Whenever I think of noise pollution, I feel bad for the whales. All the noise that people make in the ocean with their boats and oil rigs is driving them crazy. Unfortunately, the noise also stresses them out and makes them sick. Scientists say that may be a reason why whales are beaching themselves more often. Thinking of the whales makes me sad, and it's too early to feel sad. Also, I have no plans of getting out of bed. So I cover my face with my blanket to drown out the noise, and then the door squeaks open. Oh, are you still sleeping? Mom has the vacuum in her hand. Through the holes in my blanket, I spy that she has a sly smile. Perdoname, she says, asking for forgiveness. I feel her sit down next to me on the bed, and she starts singing, mm, this is a tough one, Duermete Niña. I angrily throw off the blankets. First of all, Duermete Niña is for sleepy time. 
I sit up in bed and cross my arms. Not to mention, it's a song for night, and it's now morning. Look at how angry she is. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. She laughs and kisses my head on the top. Okay, okay, I'm awake, I say. It's hard to be too upset with Mom. Buenos dias, mi stellita. I swing my legs around the bed. I rub my eyes, trying to get the sleep out. You got an email from Stanley. I leap out of bed. Why didn't you start with that? Mom puts her hand to her chest. Perdoname. Over pan tostada, Mom and I read Stanley's email together on the computer. Mom moves the mouse around for me because my fingers are sticky from the jam on my toast. Hola, Stella. How are you? I'm doing great. My dad and I just went to West Texas for a quick trip before my NASA space camp. It's so different from the rest of Texas. There are cacti and mountains. I even saw a jackrabbit. The best part is, I saw not just one real-life telescope, but three. They were enormous and weigh a ton. I'd say they're almost the size of a school bus. I was at the McDonald Observatory. The tour guide let me move it with his remote control. It was so cool. I feel officially ready now for my space camp. I mean, who else will have been there that have operated a real-life telescope? What about you? What are you doing? Anything fun? Let me know. Sincerely, Stanley. Sounds like he is having a great time, Mom says. Vacations are the best, I reply. Mom nods. They are also inspiring, and I nudge Mom with my elbow. Mom chuckles. Well, maybe we could go on our own little vacation before your camp starts. I nod enthusiastically. I've been looking into visiting family. I'm just waiting to hear back from work if I can take the time off, she says. <gasps> I squeal, and I wonder where we would go. Tia Maria might be traveling somewhere cool in the United States. Maybe we'll join her. One summer, we drove to see her in Washington, D.C. We visited all the sites, like the Air and Space Museum and the Capitol. If this vacation were to happen, then I will have two huge adventures this summer. Let me work on that. But first, do you want to help? Uh, do you want me to help replying back to Stanley? I pause, and I stare at the keyboard keys. I pull up my curls. My summer hasn't been nearly as interesting as his yet. I only just found out about my summer camp, but I have nothing else to add really beyond that. I turn toward Mom. I don't know what to write. Well, you don't have to write back right away. This email is going to stay magically in the computer until you are ready, she says, tapping the screen. So we can do that. Maybe Jenny's party will give you some inspiration. I hug Mom. She's so smart. And by the look of the clock, you should probably go get ready, she says, putting the vacuum up in the closet. I'm excited to see Jenny. I haven't seen her as much as I'd like since the she started dance camp. This should be extra fun, too, since it's a party. At Jenny's family parties, I'm the only non-Vietnamese person there, and many of them prefer speaking Vietnamese. I really don't mind it at all. It's less pressure than I'm when I'm visiting my own family. At my family events, I have so much I want to say, but I don't have all the Spanish words I want to say to them. This time, I am determined to try to learn a little Vietnamese and be a better party guest. Wouldn't that be very polite? When I get in Jenny's mom's car, I ask right away, how do you say hello in Vietnamese? Ah, oh, Jenny sighs. It's complicated. Well, it depends whether the person you're speaking to is younger or older or much older or a boy or if they're a girl. I scratch my head and think, there is no way I can memorize that many ways to say hola. Then I have another great idea. Well, what about thank you? It's sort of the same, says Jenny. You have to make it special for each person. I gulp. I guess I'll just smile. Good idea, says Jenny, giving me the thumbs up. How is dance camp going? I say, switching topics. I really want to tell her about my shed summer camp, but I figure it's polite to ask her about camp first. Isn't she a good friend? Awesome, Jenny beams. Ms. Charlton is going to assign parts for the big recital soon. I can't wait to hear what part I get. I quiver. The idea of performing in front of that many people still sounds a little scary. Not for Jenny, though. Jenny can sing, dance, and talk in front of anyone. If there were a fish, if they, if she were a fish, she would definitely not be a sargassum fish. They look like seaweed with eyes and hide among the seagrass beds. Jenny is happy to stand out. She is more like a brightly colored mantis shrimp. Now it's my turn to share some amazing news. Super cool, Jenny replies after I tell her about my summer camp. 
I hope you get to pet a dolphin. <gasps> Me too. When we arrive at the house party, it looks almost like the Vietnamese New Year's party we went to last year. Until Jenny, I didn't realize that Vietnamese people had their own New Year. That party was amazing. It was during the day, not at night. We ate from a giant buffet. But this party is a graduation celebration for Jenny's cousin Michelle, who just graduated from college. Is this your whole family, I asked Jenny, looking at a packed room? She laughs. No, some of the people are from my mom and auntie's temple. Even though I can't speak back to everyone at the party, I make sure to smile very big. It seems to work because people smile back and share more delicious food. I even make sure to say thank you, clearly like my speech teacher Ms. Thompson taught me. To my surprise, a few people reply, you're welcome, without any accent at all. It makes me turn a little roja, like a tomato. I guess they're just like mom's friends from work who can speak English well, but prefer to speak their language with friends and family. When we see Michelle, we make sure to chat with her. I made you a graduation card, I say. I love it, she replies, carefully examining my narwhal drawing. I wanted to draw her a squirrel fish, but I thought she might not know what one was. While the squirrel fish are pretty cute looking with gigantic eyes, narwhals are a crowd favorite. So, are you moving back? Jenny asks eagerly. Michelle is Jenny's favorite cousin and used to babysit her when Jenny's mom was at work. Not yet. I'm taking a gap year, Michelle replies. What's that, I ask? A year to explore and help the world before I have to work full time. Wow, I say, practically jumping off the ground. Michelle giggles. I'm going to volunteer at the Marine Mammal Center near San Francisco. I'll be able to help rehabilitate otters, seals, and other types of animals. My mouth drops open. The idea of saving sea critters sounds amazing. It also sounds like the perfect job for me. It's important for everyone to play a part in taking care of the Earth. After all, we only have one planet. Can you imagine how much better the environment would be if we all chipped in? Before I can ask Michelle more about her gap year, she gets pulled into another conversation. Jenny and I head to the buffet for some more yummy food. While we eat pork and rice dumplings, I notice people giving Michelle all these red envelopes. They sparkle with gold drawings on top. Do we get one? I ask, leaning over to Jenny. No, those are only for Michelle. Why? She whispers, they're full of money. I begin to exclaim, whoa, but I want... Whoa, sh Jenny hushes me. You only get big red envelopes on big days, like your graduation or a wedding. Jenny looks at me. I must have looked at disappointed because she says, I know. I just can't wait till my graduation. I keep trying to convince my mom every year to give me a graduation party. Maybe fifth grade. Cross your fingers. I slurp up some more rice noodles from my bowl of pho and turn to Jenny. This is a two thumbs up party. Thank you for bringing me. I can't go to a party without my best friend. Jenny throws her arm around me. After we stuff ourselves with food, we play tag in the backyard with the only other kids from the party. Then we run back in to eat sweet rice dumplings stuffed with mung bean paste. I wonder what that is. There's a picture, let me see here. There's a picture of the rice dumplings. It looks like some chopsticks on there. By that point, the party is getting louder. Some of the parents are even singing karaoke. Most of the kids we were playing tag with run back outside in embarrassment at the sight of their parents singing, but Jenny and I stay inside to watch the show. I could never sing in front of a crowd, but it's fun to watch other people do it. On the car ride home, I start thinking of all the stellar things I have to write to Stanley, especially about Michelle. I want to save the world too, especially sea creatures. And I don't want to wait until after college. At the rate summer is going, that's way too far away. All right, well, that's it for today. We're going to be back for Chapter 6 tomorrow. Like I said, we're going to probably do 15 minutes or three chapters, kind of whatever comes first. Don't forget, there's going to be questions down the bottom here. Feel free to answer them in the comments, and I will uh, make some comments back to you. Stay healthy, everybody. Go outside and play. Put your boots on. Stomp around in some puddles. See you tomorrow.